Welcome. This video is going to take a look at the procedure for finding the molecular weight of a volatile liquid. So the procedure says, step one, fill your beaker about two-thirds full of water and make sure you can immerse the flask up to its neck without spilling water over. So here's my big uh, beaker, about a thousand milliliter beaker. I filled it a little over 700, between seven and 800. And I'm going to want my beaker on my hot plate to be heating it up. So then I've got my ring stand right next to it. And if I loosen here, I can turn this around so I can clasp my flask and I'm gonna have to slide this over to the edge. And right now I don't have anything in my flask. I'm just looking to see that I can attach it here and then I wanna drop this down as far as possible. So I'll drop it down to there when I'm ready to clasp it in and then I'll go ahead and tighten it up here. So that looks like pretty good positioning. Open it up so I can take the flask out for now. And then step two says, go ahead and start heating the water bath on the hot plate to near boiling. And you don't want it boiling or at least not boiling hard because then your water level is gonna go down as it boils away fairly quickly. And it says, try to keep the temperature constant as this will be assumed to be the temperature of our gas. So especially when you're reaching the end of um, changing all the liquid inside this flask into a gas, you want to try and have a fairly constant temperature since you will use that in your calculations. Then step three says find the mass of the flask. And we're using the smaller 125 milliliter flask. And that says the stopper and eyedropper all together. And instead of the um, stopper and eyedropper, you've got one piece there that looks like this. This is like having a really long eyedropper. And I think it'll be easier to tell when the liquid is done uh, vaporizing. So this will fit in there. You can just put it in. You're going to go ahead and mass this whole thing together and this is going to be considered our empty flask even though we know there's some air in there. Now if you've just done like I have and had this in the water bath, make sure you wipe this off with a paper towel so those droplets of water aren't um, included in the mass of your empty flask. Make sure you record that somewhere and that says add three milliliters of an unknown volatile liquid to the flask so there'll be a beaker over at the supply table. Should have a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. Go get three milliliters of this. Um, if you don't have exactly three, it's okay, but make sure you record it to the nearest tenth and have an accurate recording because that will factor into your calculations as well. Then once I've added my, put my volatile liquid in here, recap this right away in case any of it starts changing to a gas. And then step five says clamp the flask to a ring stand. Immerse the flask up to its neck in the hot water bath. Now remember, if you're heating this, be careful because it's probably hot already, both the hot plate and the water. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up. And I'm hanging up on my... Uh... You'll probably have the same fun that different pieces get caught on each other. But you're going to go ahead and clamp it in there. And we're going to assume that's clamped in. I don't want to uh, pause to fight with it. But you're going to go ahead and heat it. It says the flash should be at least 0.5 centimeters from the bottom. That won't be a problem uh, with the height of these beakers. Heat until all liquid evaporates and excess vapor is no longer expelled. And on step six, it says check for additional vapor by holding a chilled microscope slide just above the eyedropper. You won't need to do that. Instead, what you'll be able to do is watch this tube, and you will see some liquid percolating up it. And um, when there's no longer any liquid in this long tube, then we're going to heat it an additional minute to make sure it reaches barometric pressure inside the flask. Then step eight says measure the temperature of the water by placing the bulb of the thermometer on a level with the center. I can go ahead and take this out. With the center, go ahead and measure your temperature. It should be around 95 to 100. Then it says remove the flask from the hot water bath and allow it to cool. You know, so when I took mine out, it was easy because mine's not actually hot, but you may need to uh, use some paper towels to help take that out. Or you could just remove the whole clamp here, might make it easier as well. And it says allow two to three minutes for the vapor to completely condense and come back to room temperature. Dry the flask, reweigh the flask with the condensed liquid, and discard the liquid. And then you're going to go on and calculate the unknown. Uh, the mass of the unknown present in the flask from those two measurements. And then the last step you really need to do before calculations is to find the volume of the flask occupied by the vapor. 
So what you're gonna do is take notice of where your stopper is in here and then use uh, the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder or you can use the big 500 milliliter one and fill this up to that level with water and that should be equal to the volume of gas that occupied that as well.